Wood has voids. I'm Caleb. You want to just delete that one? Yeah. So it's a fact of life. Wood is an organic material. And so it tends to have voids, defects. Could be cracks, nail holes, nut holes. These knots kind of stayed in. Sometimes they come out and you have big holes or just rot, decay. But that doesn't always mean the piece is no good and you just can't use it and you throw it away, burn it. I want to still put it in a project, but you got to deal with those things. There aren't really any ways I would say that you should never use unless it's... Not every technique works in every situation. There's some techniques you might wanna just stay away from. So today I'm gonna to go over a lot of different techniques and when is the right time to use them because you can really shoot yourself in the foot later if you're using the wrong technique at the wrong time. I'm Caleb Harris with You Can like Make. I'm Caleb Harris with You Can Make This Too. Let's talk about filling cracks and holes. I'm going too long-winded, we're gonna start over. First up, I wanna talk about the poor man's wood filler, a good go-to, which is glue and sawdust. Nice thing is the sawdust, if it's from your project, it tends to match. If you have like a bag on your sander, you can dump that out. Or depending on what's going on, you can just, you know, make some fresh sawdust. And as you can see, the sawdust is actually filling that in nicely, just sanding on it. Now, if you're doing large gaps, what you can do is, you know, make a lot of sawdust, use regular whatever PVA wood glue you're using. This is type bond two probably. Another way you can do is make that sawdust, pile it up on your crack, get a little bit of CA glue. I like using Starbond, run that over it, then hit it with activator. Pros and cons here. It's dirt cheap. You have all the materials and it matches the wood very well for now. PVA glue will take a little time to dry, normally about two hours before you can keep working with this stuff. Advantage of using CA glue, cyanoacrylate, Starbond glue, is once you hit it with activator, you're good. And in like 30 seconds, you can start sanding this stuff, which is really nice because it lets you move quick. The downside is both of these tend to be a lot harder than the wood that it's around. So if you do have to sand and CA tends to kind of dome up some, so you have to, you gotta be careful that you don't dish the wood around it because the wood is going to sand faster than the glue. And that's really important if you're using a soft wood like poplar, pine, cypress, cedar, et cetera. If you're dealing with harder woods, so like hard maple or oaks, not quite as big a deal because the wood isn't gonna sand super fast anyways. But there is one significant downside to dealing with these. I'm gonna do an angle change. And that fatal flaw, I'll be able to and that fatal flaw I'll show you soon, but if you've done a lot of woodworking before and nice finishing, you've probably realized this, and that is glues do not accept stainer finish. It might kind of stick over it. A lot of times it doesn't really adhere. And if you're doing your clear coats, it's normally not as big a deal, but if you're staining or using an oil-based finish, the ambers, then you're gonna have a big clear streak right in your wood or a gob of what looks like sawdust and glue in the middle of your project instead of wood that stains the same. So you might think, well, that sounds like I should never use it. Not necessarily. What if you're doing paint grade furniture? I do a lot of fine furniture, but some things I paint. If you're painting, it doesn't matter. So these can be very fast, expedient ways to, you know, fill little voids you have so you can get a nice smooth finish. The CA glue is almost dry, a little bit more. I'll sand it down real quick and we'll rub some stain on here so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. All right. So we did the CA glue, hit it with some activator, let it dry, sanded it nice and quick. I uh, had a little tear out here, some of the CA got in there. It is nice and smooth now. Got this Merlot stain, it'll pop nicely so we can see. So come in close and I'll show you. All right, so with the stain on, let it sit a second, wiped it off. But if we look close, um, in the crack, it, it didn't really take, and it looked dark before, which isn't, isn't a big deal, but like where there was any tear out around there and the CA glue did fill, it absolutely didn't take at all. So for this like hairline crack, not too big of a deal depending on what color you're doing, but it, once you get up to any 
larger voids at all where you can see the wood underneath, then you're just gonna have these spots that pop out that don't match. So the exception to this glue concept is, and this is another reason I like using Starbond, have a discount code below, is they also make brown and black super glue. So this is really cool because when you use brown or black to do any little void filling and you're fine with that color, it doesn't matter if you're coming back and staining or anything because you just turned it into like an accent color to hopefully kind of disappear. Brown is good if you're working with um, brown woods like mahogany or whatever. Black works pretty well with anything. It just sort of turns your flaws into features. So if you're not worried about trying to have a flawless natural finish where you want to perfectly match all voids with wood grain and everything and you're fine with some little pop outs, the black CA glue is perfect. It won't take any stain, but I don't care because it's not going to show this contrast between the unstained wood and the stained wood. It'll just be stained wood and black or brown. So it's cool. So it's not a never, it's a sometimes, and definitely not if you're gonna be staining or using an oil-based finish, especially if you're gonna be covering areas where you might be able to see through the glue to the unstained finished wood or this stuff where you're mixing with sawdust. Honestly, that's probably a never unless you're painting because it's just, it's just gross. The other thing about using those glues are those are always gonna be small non-structural repairs. Now, keeping with that vein of we're doing a repair and we're gonna have a pop of color, we're not trying to match it, but maybe let's say we're moving up to larger areas, we have some other options. Bondo or fairing compound is a, let me read, what is it? It's a, some type of resin. Yeah, it doesn't say, whatever. Hmm. Can't remember what the like chemical names are. Poly, that's what it is, polyester resin instead of epoxy resin. Sorry, I'm gonna start over. What was I saying? The nice thing is this is fairly tintable. It's really hard to get this black, but I have learned it takes other colors pretty well, like brown. And this is a two part, so it's pretty durable. I mean, it's used on vehicles and everything. Over here, I actually have a walnut table. And on some of the edges, I did my best to make sure any voids were on the bottom and in the middle of the table. But I had some on the edges where I had to do a profile. And because it was an edge, it'd be really hard to mold it up to use epoxy resin. And epoxy takes hours to dry. I was able to mix up some polyester resin. It's like a putty smack it on there, and in like 10 minutes, I was able to sand it and smooth it, and with the brown, it actually blended in quite nicely. It took me a few minutes to find where this repair was. So that's an option to keep in your back pocket if you are dealing with somewhere that you're not worried about how strong it is, so you're not trying to add strength, um, you want something that cures fast, you're not trying to go black, and you're not too worried about how well it takes stains. Uh, another option in that is Fix Wood by Total Boat. You guys know I love my Total Boat products, and this is an epoxy putty, so it's one-to-one -one mix, and just makes a little putty that's easy, and the nice thing about this is also, because it's a putty, you don't have to worry about making a mold or anything. The downside is it does take like 24 hours to dry, but you can tint it, pigment it like you would any epoxy shape it. I think it's more durable than the polyester resin. So if I'm doing a repair where I have the time and it's gonna be a hardware surface like on a top corner of a table or something, it's gonna see a lot of abrasion. I'd rather use the fixed wood than the polyester resin. Lastly, just straight epoxy resin, which you guys have seen tons and tons and tons of probably. So I probably don't need to talk about pros too much. The downside of course of dealing with this is it is a liquid. So you need to make sure that whatever you're feeling is watertight. Um, that's where these other ones can come in handy is you don't have to totally seal it. It's a putty, you can work it in there. But you have lots of color options. It'll take any kind of color. You can add mica pigments and get that cool effect and really turn void feeling into an artistic pop. Another downside though is when you're dealing with smaller voids, it can take a really long time for it to seep in and you can kind of have to chase it. So if you are gonna go the epoxy resin route to fill things, try to keep it to your larger voids or, and this is a big, big, big pro of using true epoxy resin, is it's structural. I have no problem doing structural repairs because it's gonna bond really well. It's an incredibly strong and it gets just a super bond. Whenever I do this repair in wood, it's that repair is normally stronger than the wood was before. That's one time I always go to epoxy resin as if it's gonna be a structural repair. 
always do epoxy resin. Like on some of these glue ups in this table, I actually had places where the board got really thin on my edge glue up. So I was able to edge glue up and support it around, but I flipped it over and then filled those boys voids with epoxy resin and let it cure because I know that's gonna replace the strength I'd lost in a way that an epoxy putty or polyester resin just isn't gonna be able to match. And talking about colors, especially when you're talking vibrant colors, this is brown, but this um, pigment dispersion by Total Boat for vibrant colors like your reds, yellows, blues, greens, especially red can be really hard to find a good mix for sometimes. The red and the other vibrant colors in this are like so rich and deep. I swear by them. So if you're struggling to get some of those colors and you want a, something you can mix into things, check out the pigment dispersions. I'll have a link below for all Total Boat stuff that gives you a discount too. I was gonna say I can do it again and try to keep them all facing front better. That one rolled again, didn't it? All right, last breakdown. Non-structural, but stainable. We're doing natural finish. So we got maple, pine, beach, cherry, whatever, but we're gonna be adding a stain to it to change the color. And we don't wanna do like black features or brown features, or we're not gonna try to make the voids artistic going teal or red or green or whatever. Trying to make it keep it all look like wood, but we need to handle these repairs. Wood filler, like real actual marketed made as sustainable wood filler. I like to use Timbermate. It's a, it's a good product and it comes in several different base colors. On hand, I keep the white stuff. It's not really white, the uh, blonde. So this is maple beach pine. I keep walnut and cherry in between those that handle most of my projects because almost everything I build is maple, walnut, cherry, oak. These pretty much handle that and it's these take stain. Now the thing to remember about that is seldom are these colors an exact match to the wood. So if this walnut is a little darker than my walnut or a little lighter than my walnut after I stain it, that spot is still gonna be a little lighter or a little darker. It's not gonna make it match perfectly, but this is going to take the stain. So however much lighter or darker this is than my wood before the stain, it'll be the same after the stain, unlike doing some other things that are just gonna stay exactly the same. Yeah. So yeah, there's a time and place for just actual actual wood putty and this stuff's handy. It dries pretty quick. It's water-based, low VOC. You can just wipe it in with a putty knife. Use a putty knife for your wood putty, sand it smooth, and then you're free with any kind of stain. But again, small voids, small defects, non-structural. And for another non-structural, non-stainable, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention rag, Ragnate? Rangate. Rangate. A Rangate kit has an industrial strength glue gun. Basically, it's really hot, really fast. Pressing block and a little scraper. And this uses, I believe this is a polyamide resin. Basically, a giant hot glue stick you put in the gun. You squirt it on there and then you mash it. And what this does is helps work it into your void and also helps it cool because it's several hundred degrees. And then you come back with your little smoother block and you smooth it off. This does not take stain. I haven't had any problems with the finishes I use adhering to it. I normally use water-based Total Boat Halcyon or general finishes Armor Seal and Conversion Varnish. I haven't had any issues with those adhering to it. We have to realize it's not going to take color. So any of your wipe on, wipe off stains, once you wipe off, it's just gonna come right off. But one of the handy things about these is these come in a lot of color. You can get white, black, walnut, cherry, et cetera. And where this comes in is just speed. You can move really quick. You can't do huge, but like your medium size voids and small holes. And another advantage is let's say you're working with soft wood where I wouldn't want to do say CA glue or something because I know I'm going to dish my soft wood trying to sand and smooth. This is advantageous because I'm using a plane and it's a resin where almost everything else is going to be really hard. So I don't have to do any post sanding, which uh, is another advantage is if you've already finished sanded and you found something you want to repair, this is the tool you can come out to do repairs after you're finished sanding, or even if you've already done some, some base courses, you might be able to get away with using this uh, during the middle of your finishing process for repairs. Okay. So yeah, there's like seven different ways to fill your wood voids and different strategies for structural or non-structural. And pretty much everything's non-structural in my opinion, except for epoxy resin. I think the sawdust PVA glue, probably structural because PVA glue does get harder than wood, but it's really made to bond things together and not be a gap filler. It doesn't have any gap filling strength. 
So not really. Epoxy resin, if anything, structural, but then when you get into the non-structural, you're breaking down whether or not you want to stain it, if you're okay with it being an accent color or if it's being painted, and that can inform it. And then the other things you want to consider is whether or not you're okay sanding it to get everything smooth. If there's concerns about the material or sanding being harder than the wood, or if you would rather scrape it, et cetera. Depends on if you're painting it, if you're staining it, if you're just clear coating, and uh, where you are in the process. Anyways, I hope this was helpful for you. I don't like that end, so we're gonna try again. I'm really bad at wrapping things up sometimes. Oh, that's something I should do. And that's it. That's the seven techniques I normally use. If I missed one that you like to use or have a little bit more feedback, we're all here to learn, so please stick that below. Um, and if you would like to leave other comments or hit the like button and subscribe, or if you share videos, you're that kind of person that enjoys doing those things. Thank you so much. That really goes a long way to helping me continue doing this. And if you're not, that's okay. Thank you for watching this video. Anyway, I hope you learned something, were inspired, or at least a little entertained. Until next time, make time to make something. If this topic has been interesting to you and want to know more about setting yourself up for good finishing, I'm going to have a video coming out soon about the right way to sand. Um, sanding actually has some of the techniques that's really important, and then how to apply finish properly. And if you've just been struggling in other aspects of your projects, I have a beginner's woodworking common mistakes video you might want to check out. Those will all be linked below. Thanks.